Hi, welcome to Stitch and Stuff. My name is Sarah. And my name is Kim, but I'm also known as Mimi. Um, and I live in Seattle area. Sarah lives in the Yakima, um, Eastern Washington area. So the only way we can do this is to be able to do it via Zoom. Um, and we hope that it works okay. Um, I feel like we started to try to do this maybe a year ago, but Zoom was new and nobody really knew what Zoom was, but now I think everybody knows what Zoom is. So we're gonna give it a try. And um, this channel is gonna be about our stitching and a little bit of our knitting. And um, we have some guests that are gonna be on that live with Sarah. And if it's um, not clear, that's my mom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Mimi to, to, to the guests that are gonna be on. Um, and that's basically what our show is going to be about. Yep. So we thought we would start by showing some of our um, either a previous fully finished cross stitch. I think that that's what I have. Is that what you have? We haven't even showed each other what we were going to sh share. Yeah. So um, I will start. Mine is an old project that I stitched a long time ago and I actually should have looked up who designed it, but this is Daisy Girl is the name of the pattern. And I think I probably bought the pattern at like Michael's or Joanne or something in their little cross stitch section. And I finished it several years ago and don't do very many full coverage pieces like that, but um, I love it. I think it's probably one of my favorite things I've ever stitched. I think I, I always thought that was a kit. Oh, maybe it was a kit. You know, it was so long ago. I feel like I stitched it in high school or something. I mean, I just, it's been so yeah. long. I think you definitely started it in high school because I think you were living at home when you started it. So I always pull this out in the spring and put it on the wall and I I just love it. I don't know. It's just really pretty. Sarah, Sarah tends to like big, lots of coverage pieces. And I think I used to, but I that would overwhelm me. But I don't do, well, I have gone back. There was a long time where I didn't stitch much like that. And now I've gotten a few more projects like that. Yeah. But it's just one of my favorites and it's really apt because I have three daughters who are going to join us in a few minutes as my mom said so anyways this was the one that I picked I should look up maybe I'll put in the details section below if I can find what pattern this was I'll put it in the show notes and see interesting to know if anybody ever sees this video in comments that they stitched it too because I don't think I've ever seen yeah. anybody talk about that piece yeah and I don't know if it's even still available so I should find out I should have done research ahead. I don't know why I didn't think to do that, but it's because we're new. Because <laughs> we're brand new at this and don't know what we're doing. But anyways, that's Daisy Girl, and I just love it. It's so pretty. Makes me happy every time I see it on the wall. It just makes me it's happy. very pretty. I forgot to say when I introduced us, by the way, that the the name that we chose, Stitch and Stitch and Stuff, is based off of. Um, uh, a cross stitch store that was open for many many years in my area. Um, I I started I started stitching in 1982 and stitched all through my children's childhood. And um, this shop was just such a fun treat to go to. And um, the owner was just a, a sweet sweet lady. And um, she passed away and the store closed. And it closed. Uh, her daughter tried to keep it going, but just really, I don't think had a heart for it. And then um, I think the closure of that store and then going back to work all kind of brought about the end of my cross stitching for many years because I did go back to work and I um, was on a computer all day. And, um, and online buying wasn't really um, a thing yet. And so I didn't even know you could buy cross stitch stuff on the internet but I when I was digging through stuff to show today I found something that I had saved and it is a bag <laughs> from my favorite store Stitch and Stuff. oh my gosh <laughs> and I, I don't even know why I still had it there was nothing in it it was just maybe I saved it when I found out she'd passed away but that's the that is the meaning behind our name um, I kind of view it as a tribute to Edna who kept all of us stitching through the 80s and early 90s and um, for so we've been talking about doing a floss tube for about a year and just sort of, yeah, didn't really know how to do the technology long distance because we live about two and a half hours away from each other. Um, and, but we decided, well, it's, we're in the middle of quarantine. Let's do it. Let's do something fun. And now that the technology is so readily understood and available. Um, so we were batting around different ideas and we had a lot of ridiculous ones suggested by my husband and my 
other loved okay. ones. <laughs> and um, one night I just thought, what about the stitch in stuff or stitch in stuff or something, some variation on that. And I knew right away that that's what I really wanted. So when, because it's so meaningful and I, that's probably where we got my first little cross stitch project. Um, I've been stitching since I was five pretty steadily. I mean, I think I've taken breaks like in college, I didn't cross stitch a lot. And when I first had babies, I sort of, I picked up knitting and was doing that a lot more. Um, but I have so many memories, vivid memories of that little shop, sometimes waiting in the car when we were little and mom would run in and get something she needed, but sometimes going in with her was such a big treat. So that's the origin of where we decided to settle on this name. And I was sort of surprised that that name hadn't been taken. I don't know. It just seemed. I know. I know. Perfect. Um, I did. I also didn't share that when I started cross stitching, I um, was newly married and newly pregnant with Sarah and didn't have any hobbies. Did not. I did a little bit of embroidery as a child, maybe crocheted a brief moment in time when I was um, in like campfire girls or something. And uh, I, I just think we were my husband and I were at a at a big mall in my area just a regular shopping mall. And there was a little corner shop and it was all cross stitch stuff. And I don't even think I'd ever even seen that store before. I mean, I grew up going to that mall and I went in and bought a little kit. It was either a Basilla kit or a dimensions kit. And I'm hoping to find it because I know I still have the finished project. Mm -hmm. um, but at that time, you know, you could find um, cross stitch stores at anywhere, even in the malls. And so by the time we moved back, we had moved to Minnesota. By the time we moved back here and found Edna's shop, they weren't, there weren't as many shops around. So she really was the hub for all of us stitchers in the South King County area. But um, yeah, so anyway, that, that did have a lot of meaning to, for me too when she suggested it. And I'm gonna show finish? you, huh? Did you bring an old finish? I did. This is a finish that's actually on my wall year round. I have a little audience. You can come peek in. It really needs to be cleaned. <laughs> um, I stitched this and again, I apologize, I did not, look up the designer. I know I have another one in my old, old, old whips bucket with to do that has her name. So I will look it up. But um, I stitched this. I actually dated it. And I stitched this in 1994. That's been on your wall forever. It's been on my wall for a very, very long time. And I, I love it. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's been in the bedroom and now it's in the family room. And I really loved this, the simplicity of it. I'm sure it's just stitched on, um, I think it's on like a 18 count and I'm sure it's all just DMC. Uh, back in those days, I didn't have any fancy floss. So cute. But um, yeah, and I have an, an unfinished one by her. It's finished, but just not framed that I found in my bucket of goodies. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen that one because yeah. you probably stitched it and then just put it away. Right, and I don't even have a date on this. This one's done on 28 count, I'm pretty sure. Oh, um, that's really cute. But I do love them. And you can tell that I didn't really worry about three inch borders. No, I don't <laughs> ever, still. Oh, I try to do three inches, but. I think I usually hit, I try to hit two. That's probably I, one, one and a half. I really need to get her this frame. It's a pretty springs piece. So. Yeah, you can switch it out in yeah. the other one on your wall, depending on the season. I this one, I don't think. Oh. Oh yeah, you're right. Too small. Thought I pulled. Oh, I pulled, and then I pulled a really, really. This will show you how long ago I stitched, because anybody that stitched in the '80s will recognize something like this. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't have geese on it. That you all will be joking with that. No. But it looks like it could have a goose on it. It yeah. has that. And I got very creative and I put like a little quilt, like a little strip around it. I don't think you've had that hanging on your wall at any point that I can remember. I can't, your microphone's not, it's kind oh. of. Blue. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I don't know what my plan was for it. I don't know why I put the fabric around it, <laughs> but that shows you how long ago I stitched and I probably got it out of a magazine like this <laughs> yeah from the 1980s Aww. so i remember when i was when we were young married and little i had little kids and i did we just had one car i didn't get to go very many places during the day uh that when that magazine would come in the mail that was like the happiest day of my month i, I lived for that magazine so 
that's my that's my uh, previous finishes. Well, the girls couldn't wait to come in. They wanted to see your stuff too, so I said they could come in. So these are our guests for today and maybe ongoing if they like to, but we're not forcing it. But if they want to, they do though. They've been asking. Actually, we might have let the idea die, but the girls kept asking, when are you doing that video so we can show too? We want to show too. So all three, these are my three daughters and they all cross stitch and they also all knit as well. So maybe, and there's various, crafting going on here all the time. So in the future, we'll just highlight different things that they're doing, but they all brought at least one thing to share that they're stitching right now. Um, so I'll start with Liddy. She's our oldest. Liddy, you want to say your name? How old you are? 10. Liddy's 10 and she's working on a pretty big project. And this was a project given to her, are you showing the big one? By her great grandmother. So my mom's mother, my grandma gave her this project as a gift and it's a stamped cross stitch which I've never really done before and she's never really done before but it's and the colors are not the same as they will be once they're stitched so the ink washes out and I don't know do I have it upside down no no I think, <laughs> there's um, a snowman I've done the, this so I've she has stitched I'll bring it forward this is oh. Santa Claus and this is a snowman and you can see she's just done a little, she's done some green. of the green on that snowman's hat. It actually blends in with the ink, but she's been cross stitching that. And way down here, she's begun some of that black, is it oh, part yeah. of Santa? Yeah, uh, yes. Santa's belt uh, maybe. Santa's belt. So yes. this is a big project that she's been working on and I don't know the details on it actually, but. Yes. Wow, I don't, I think I remember great grandma giving that to you, but I didn't know you'd actually started working on it. Wow, that's a cool project, Lid. It's big, so that'll be a long, did you have another one you wanted to show? A smaller, much. oh, a smaller one. So I finished doing. this one. So like me, they have now begun multiple projects at once. This was, was this your first? Yes. This was her first project that she stitched, and it's a little, Box. probably a Bucilla kit or... I forget what the, you know, one of those little tiny beginner kits. It's a little fox because she loves foxes. So. Oh, that's so sweet, Lydia. I don't think I ever actually saw that finished. Maybe we need to make it into a pillow or something. Yeah, I'm going to take the hoop off. Oh, here's my hoop. I gave it to Lydia. I was looking for this little hoop the other day to right. show my friend who just started cross-stitching. Okay, let's see. I think that shows up okay. Yeah. Um, as a year ago in the spring, we went on spring break down we drove through down through Utah, well, through several states, and then into Utah, and we went to Zion National Park. We're big into national parks and visiting things like that. Um, but we also stopped at Shepherd's Bush um, Cross Stitch Store. I don't. They design probably most people are sort of familiar. And we went in there, and it was so fun because I've been stitching Shepherd's Bush for a long time, and I've stitched three of their big stockings for the girls. But we. Um, picked up little patterns, little kits for the two older girls. They bought them. And this is going to say what, Liddy? Peek your head extraordinary. down. Extraordinary. It's going to say extraordinary. It's almost top, done. So be extraordinary. Be extraordinary. Oh. And there's little buttons to add and all kinds of things. So she's been working really hard on that this spring. That is looking so great, Liddy. So cute. It's really cute. And then let's see, we'll just go in age. So this is, peek your head, this is Millie. Millie, say how old you are. Nine. Millie is nine and she loves to cross stitch too. What do you have to show today? It's like show and tell. Kind of. Here, I'll show the picture since we have the picture. Don't bump the, you have to be really careful. I know it's kind of squishy because my, my cross stitch patterns are all down here. So this is what she got at that Shepherd's Bush store. It says bloom where you are. Oh. Bloom where you are. So sweet. And here, oh, she's so close to being done too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really close. Oh, yeah. Bloom. That. You've even done your back stitching already. She has done some back stitching and she changed, she's big into being unique. She changed the color of the M because she didn't want it to be the same as the B. So she picked out and a DMC L. floss from my. Oh, oh and the L, L. yeah. So it's supposed to be blue for the B and the L and the M, but she just. That likes to do her own thing and create her own ideas, which is cool. Well, um, after watching as much floss tip as I've watched, um, you're in good company, Millie, because there's a lot of stitchers that like to, that, to change their colors around. And here is Rosie. She's our youngest. How old are you? 
seven. Rosie is seven. Oh, we'll show, we'll do Rosie's and you can show your other one. And do you have something to show about that you've been stitching? Where is it? Is this her first piece? This is her very first cross stitch ever. Bring it over here. Ready. Oh, let's see. I don't know if I have a photo of it and I don't want to ch show the chart. Hmm, how am I going to do that? Is there a photo of it somewhere on here? I don't nope. think so, but there is like a picture of it. I didn't think about that. This. Well, it's it going to be a little kitty. Where is it? With a ball of yarn. And she's holding a ball of yarn. You want to come over here and show it? And so she has gotten quite far. Wow, you have that ball of yarn. This is her very first project. And the little kitty is good. the um, paw stays just the white of the Ada. And then, so you don't actually stitch the paw, but it looks like a paw. And here's the beginnings of the like. Was that a kit? It's a kit. Yeah, it's a. Which one is this? Okay. It's a little dimensions kit called Cute Kitty. So if you have someone in your life who wants to start cross-stitching a tiny little one, it's Cute Kitty, dimensions, there's the number, 73038. I think so, yeah. And that's the... And this one's yeah. also dimensions. And it gives you all, How it comes with a kit and fabric, or the fabric and the thread and the needle and the directions on how to get started. So if you know a little one in your life who wants yeah. to cross stitch, this has been a good one for her. You know what? I have to stand up really quick. Somebody let the dog into this room and I don't want her in the room. Okay, in the meantime, oh, we'll show her other projects she has. Okay, hold on. Okay, um, I okay wait. You I have the... Okay, so while we're waiting for Mimi to come back, we'll show. Um, Millie's been working on this, which is from Millie. you. You bought this for them. From I her Red Needle Street. Red Needle Street in Enumclaw. Or no, Issaquah. Oh, yeah, Issaquah. I'm sorry, Issaquah. Oh, my goodness. I forgot I bought those for them. Yeah. So she just started it. She's not very far at all. I'm and not even sure what part Are those the kits that actually use like a, a yarn, a different kind of thread? Yes, it doesn't use the It's like a wool. It's like a wool thread. And so it's really different to looking and to stitch with. Yeah. You're bumping that. You don't stop bumping that. So that's Millie's last project. So there you go. Okay, you girls can go finish up here. Chore. Nice job. Saturday is chore day here. You can. I'm hoping it's not too loud. You can hear my husband mowing our huge yard, but hopefully it's not coming through too loud. I can't hear it on my end. Well, you can sit over there then if your chores are done. And I'm really sorry if you notice me waving my arms to the side because. I am quarantined at my house with four <laughs> other people and my husband, plus my husband. You're going to go see um, my um, Sarah's older brothers, or one older, well, two younger brothers, sorry. One is married and his wife are living in a trailer on our property, mm -hmm. and the other one is the youngest child is living still here and going to school and working, and his girlfriend is actually here. So, in the course of trying to do this video already, they all have had to open the door and peek in and i i think they thought i was just zooming with sarah i don't know if they knew it well yeah well they do usually like pop in and say hi yeah. and have a chat so they but I think sam wanted to take a picture of me doing this on <laughs> and then the other two came home from a dog park and opened the door and then let our dog in and she of course had to be noisy so sorry about that but we i jokingly refer to her house as ma gatz's boarding house <laughs> Uh, it's a Wonderful Life is one of my favorite movies, and I uh, think of Ma Bailey and the people in her house. It's not the same, but it's been full. That's I mean, what we call it Ma Gatz's boarding house. Ma Gatz's boarding house, and it, you know, it's been nice to be with them. But there are times that it's. I thought they were all going to be gone for a few minutes at the same time today, but I think as one couple left, the other couple came home. So perfect. I don't know. We either just leave it in or Sarah can work her magic and learn how to edit that. I'm probably not going to edit that much. Let's be honest. I don't have time for that. No. Um, so the next thing I had jotted down on my list was whips. Whips. From this week. So we're both doing a form of mania, um, stitch mania. And so we both have many projects going actually right now. I think we both have about 15 that we've been rotating through this month. We're not going to show all of those each. We're just going to show what we worked on this week. So 
Do you want to go first? Sure, I can go first. Um, my mania plan was basically, I had 15 projects that I rotated through twice, each twice during the month. And then I think at the end of the month, I had a couple of free days to work on what I wanted to work on. Um, and so, and I was, I was doing pretty good with my plan until this last weekend. And I don't know what happened. I kind of got derailed a little bit. I'm still working on mania projects, but not in the order that I had planned. Um, and so what I ended up doing, I think, um, one day I had a project that I had started for earlier this month and I was unhappy with it. It, it needed, it, it's, um, I love the pattern and I love the colors on the, on the picture, but they're NPI, NPI, NPS silks and I don't have them. And so she had given a DMC conversion, but I did not like it. Yeah. It didn't look the same. So I didn't pull that out this week. It was supposed to come up this week and I didn't do it. Um, but the last two days, I've been working on um, a Barbara Anna design, and I really do like Barbara Anna. Um, it's called, <laughs> well, I Give You My Heart. I don't know if you can see that. that patchwork on her skirt is cute. I know. Um, and I saw this pattern um, probably a year ago. I started it last year for Mania. So my, my Mania is a combination of Mania starts from last year that didn't get finished or barely got started and a, a few new starts this year. And um, this one I started last year and only had gotten her little hat done, um, her little black hat and I did not iron, I'm so sorry. But um, I've got her hair going now. Hold it, yeah, there you go. And I'm gonna, is it staying in focus? I hope so. Yeah, I think so. And okay. it's not blocking your voice like that other time. Oh, good, okay. And anyway, so I've been work. I worked on her earlier this month and got her face done. And then I've been working on her hair um, the last two days. Um, so I kind of just felt like I just wanted to stitch something that I really wanted to stitch. Um, also this week, I spent a little bit longer on a new start that I had been wanting to start since it came out. And it is going to be really glary, but it's from Streets Gobblegob. Yeah, that one's so cute. I love that whole series. Yeah. I shouldn't have them, but maybe I need to. I think I have the llama one, and I think I have the fox one. So I don't have a, I mean, okay, I have to say, when I started this, I thought, oh, look at a little pillow. This is going to be so quick. Look at this little pillow. It's really a lot of stitching. This little pillow has a lot of stitching, a lot of stitch, a lot of little motifs that take a lot of time. So I basically have gotten oh, it's so cute. one side done and two turkeys started. Oh. Um, but like those little motifs that there's like three colors in each of those little round motifs. Yeah. That's a color. lot of color changing. Yeah. It's one not did cinnamon stars too, right? That's a cinnamon. Yes. It's just like that. Like it looks like it's going to be a yeah. pretty quick pattern, but it took me a long time to do that cinnamon stars because it's like constant. The little motifs have like three or four colors in that little yeah. bit. Yep, no. and they're scattered all around. It's so cute, but it's a lot of color changes. Yeah, it was an eye opener for me. I thought, oh, I'm not going to get that done real fast. And so then I think also this week I worked on. Oh, I don't have a good color picture of this. It um, because I didn't print it in color and I bought it as a PDF. Um, I'm sorry, and I lost my good computer glasses yesterday. I apologize if my glasses are going on and off. Um, and sorry for the glare. Um, this is um, the Blue Flowers Halloween Squirrel. Oh, yeah, that one's so cute. And I'm, if you don't know, if you haven't seen it, look it up. The colors are so, so pretty. And I'm such a fall lover, and the colors are just, just real fallish. Um, and so I started it on the 1st of May, and I've worked on it a couple other times. Um, Again, there's a lot of, it doesn't look like a whole lot. And that is the beginning of a baby squirrel. And she's got a little crown on her head. Oh my gosh, cute. But it's just taking a little longer than I thought. I dyed this fabric and it's pretty grungy. Yeah. Not showing up very well, but I really love it. And the colors are autumn -y colors. So it, they are real pretty on that fabric. Um, and I'm sure that some of this gobble gob is not going to go away after mania. I, I have a goal to have, my husband bought me a dough bowl for Christmas and I've wanted to do seasonal dough bowls with little pillows. So I have several little tiny turkeys that I've been working on <laughs> to try to get that ready for fall. And the other only start I, when I worked on this week for mania was a new start also. Um, it was one of Sarah's 
favorite patterns for a long time. And so we started it on the same day. She oh, yeah. probably it. And she's a lot farther than I am. I don't think I worked on it this. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm going to show mine too. Green Co. by Plum Street. I realize I have a lot of Plum Street. Yeah, um, you do. You're doing a lot of Plum Street right now. Yeah. And I really am not very far. I mean, really, this is hardly worth showing. But again, it's just clouds. Oh yeah, you really have just done. Yeah, I have a little bit more than that done. Yeah, and yeah. I did not buy originally the the called for blue for the cloud, and it doesn't show up real good in this lighting on this fabric. But I think when I get other stuff on here, it'll pop out a little bit better. Yeah. Um, I didn't have the fancy floss, so I didn't get the variegation in the blue cloud. I when I started it the first day, I basically got a white cloud and a little bit of the blue done, and I had just picked a DMC. Uh, then I. I didn't. I saw Sarah's and hers had more variation in it, so I went and uh, ordered the. Um, yeah, I thought that one was enough coverage on the piece to be worth buying the. Right. I didn't, I didn't buy all the um, overdyed threads, but I did buy the ones that I thought were kind of bigger chunks. Of one, I regretted not buying that one, so I got it. So then I un. So I spent one basic day on Mania on it this week, picking out the old DMC uh, one section and then redoing it, but. Um, I'm doing it on a, I, I also didn't say earlier that I have a hard time with my eyes stitching on anything real small. And I am doing this, am I doing this over one? Yeah, you are, because we were talking about what you were going to do about the little tiny cow faces. Yeah, I'm doing it over one. And uh, I, I basically only, can, I, I can stitch on 32 count when I have my magnifier, which you can see behind me. It's lighted and magnified and I am my glasses. And so I can do 32. I probably could eke out 36, but it would be not a long marathon of stitching with that. So I stick mostly to 28 and 18 count. Um, it's just easy. I can do 18 count without a magnifier with just my bifocals on. So those are the projects that I could possibly stitch and take with me somewhere if I had good light, but I couldn't take a 28 over yeah. two um, without my light. So. It's part of getting old. So those are my whips for this week. Okay, I'll show mine. I think I have seven. I think I did one on every different, like a different one every day. You were better than me, wow. So I just sort of stuck to my plan. And some of them were older whips from, some of them are quite old. And then I had a few new ones. I think I have two new ones each week. So I think I started like six or seven new whips so far this month. So mine is, my first one to come up was also the Milk and Cream con, uh, Company. We just, so we live on a couple of acres in the, like in a rural area, and we already have raised a couple of steers since we moved into our house. And we had toyed with getting a milk cow for a long time, and we decided to take the plunge, and we bought um, a pregnant cow who will hopefully calf in the next few weeks. And this is totally new to us, so we don't, I mean, we know what we're doing because Ostensibly, we should just wake up one morning and there will be a calf next to her, but um, you never really know. So we, but we have friends who will help us if we get sort of stuck. So anyways, when we found, when we de decided finally to buy a milk cow, I had had my eye on this project for a long time and I thought, that's when I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start that. So I, yeah, I actually have quite a bit done. Um, the clouds and the little blue sky. Yeah. And I do like how the colors are popping on this brown fabric yeah which I think I dyed myself did I tea dye this I think you did I think I did tea dye this yeah, yeah. and so we're talking about having to get it ready to go like this chunk done and I'm trying to decide whether to keep going with the clouds and the trees or go down but I think I'm going to go down I think you should just pop around I might pop around pop around <laughs> I yeah. might I did start the fence so I could kind of go from there to the little the little lady who's milking. So that's been probably one of my favorite starts this month because it's just so cute. And then um, another one I worked on is, I don't know if I'm saying this right, right, but the pattern is from Cuore, I Bati Cuore. <laughs> I don't speak Italian, but I think it's an Italian piece. And the pattern, the pattern name is also in Italian. Non è Natale senza albero di Natale. I don't think I'm saying that right, but that's the pattern. And it's so cute. My, so this was from my mom. She gave me this for Christmas, maybe? Yep. 
plus yep. the fabric and I'm stitching it on. I think it's a Lugana. It's definitely an even weave and is really, really cute. It's going to be a really big project. I don't know what count I'm stitching it on, honestly, because I just used whatever. You know, that actually is, is another, is an example of how deceiving the pattern pictures are because yeah. that's what I thought it was going to be. It's going to be huge. Look at this yeah. huge piece of fabric. <laughs> so uh, so that's the little girl, and this week I mostly worked on that deck that's going to be the deck of the little cabin that comes behind her. So it's just really cute. It's really nice to stitch on. I really like stitching on even weave more than I remember. When I start mm -hmm. stitching on it again, I'm like, oh, this is so nice. Um, sorry for the rustling. We don't have project bags around here. We spend our money on stitching. Well, and my money on stitching materials. This other whip is really a pain in the butt to work on actually but I inherited it from you <laughs> and I pull it out and put a few stitches in every now and then so my so mom started this I don't know how long ago is there, it a, date? is there a date on the leaflet on the back they used to date the leaf I don't know if they still do but um I don't see anything just scanning it. I'm pretty, I, I am positive I bought that at our little cross stitch store stitch and stuff. And I remember picking out the threads for it. I don't see a date, but it is old, I'm sure. Yeah. How much was the leaflet? I see the price tag. Oh, the leaflet was $5. Oh. So here's the pattern. Crossed wing collection. <sighs> Frosty feast, number 29. And I, I love it. So <laughs> I really haven't done that much. Most of what's on here has been done by you. So I've added some though. So when I inherited it, the little sunflower snow girl was done. And some of Peppermint Pete is his, this guy's name. So I finished him. I did probably half of that. I think you had done maybe half. Huh? And I just this week did the little cardinal. The pattern is so interesting. I've never stitched anything like this before because each little piece, like on the large pattern, this is just like outlined. And then you have to go find the little pattern that matches it and uh -huh. stitch the up close. And there's lots of half stitching and back stitching and it's really cute. And the thing I think that's really a pain though is this all has Krennic. All yeah. snow on the ground. I don't know if these guys were supposed to be stitched with Krennic, but they're not. You didn't, so I'm not but I am stitching the whole ground. It's gonna be basically full coverage white where the blue isn't. So I've stitched mm -hmm. a lot of that grayish. And yeah. that has that Krennic, that's blue. I would, I would guess that the snowman body were not Krennic. I don't think I would have. Back then I stitched pretty much by the book. They, okay, yeah. And I have looked at the pattern to try and see and it doesn't say that they should be. So yeah. I don't. anyway, it's a lot. There's lots of little, Lots of little details, but it's a really fun long-term project to just pull out and stitch a little bit at a time. And how many more snowmen are left? Two? There's two more. There's one here and one here, so there it goes in a line of four, and the, it's basically all white snow on the ground. All okay. But I'm pretty sure that's on a Lugana. Yeah, that it's a, it's a definitely even weave as well. Probably. I, I don't think I was stitching on a lot of actual linen. Um, I did a little bit because I was doing shepherd bushes and those are all pretty much on linen, but any of those kinds of projects, I pretty much probably bought Lugana. You can. The girls Is that stitched over two? Yes, I'm stitching that one over two. Okay. So it's gonna be big too. Yeah. Um, my next thing that had come up, you had bought me, I'll, you give me a lot of stuff. You enable <laughs> me stitching a lot. Um, when you went to Minnesota last year and you went to- Stitchville. Uh, Stitchville and picked up all these little snapper land, Bent Creek snapper lands, and then also a pattern for a border and how to put them all together. So I am stitching them all together. And this week I just started on sleigh ride. I think it's called sleigh ride, right? Sleigh ride. Is that too glary? There we go. Nope, got it. And it's really cute. I'm really liking it. I took a blue fabric that you also gave me and grunged it up with tea and or mostly just a tea dye. So it's, it started off blue, but it's definitely more like a grungy gray now. I don't know if the color's showing up, but there's the, that's the progress I made this week. I started that on Tuesday. You know, I have to tell you that I shipped her when we first went into quarantine. How long ago? I don't even know. Uh, it's been a while. She, she doesn't have access to any kind of store. Um, so all her shopping pretty much is online. And I had a lot of... Um, I bet that's a 32 count I gave you. I bet you I, I sent you. Oh, yeah, it feels so like I had a lot of fabric in my stash from when I used to stitch that I thought, well, you know, 
I probably don't need this piece of fabric. So I sent her a care package of fabrics. So she anything children, sorry. There's like oh. children mulling, like milling around, blogging the. You have children, I have children. Oh. Um, anyway, so she, so that's why she got this fabric from me. I sent her a little care package because I thought it would be quicker than her trying to order something from I mean, at that point, at that time, I think one, two, three stitch was pretty slow. Although I got a shipment from them this last week and it took less than a week. Yeah. They were really fast this week. I still have more. Um, oh, one more thing I have to tell you guys, when I went to Stitchville, so I had, I watched Floss Tube. I hear people talking about these wonderful, large cross stitch stores in the Midwest. And we have family in the Midwest and we actually had gone back there a year ago. I think we were there a year ago last week and uh, for a wedding. And it was a kind of a, a whirlwind trip. A lot of it was due, to, we had to travel from where we were in Minnesota up north. And there was a lot, lot, not very much time. But I told my husband, I am within 20 minutes of Stitchville. I, you have to let me go to Stitchville. So we were meeting friends for breakfast that we hadn't seen in 20 years. And, and then he said, okay, we can, we can squeeze it in. So we got there and I walk in and he says, okay, can you do it in about an hour? And I was like, an hour. I had not ever been in a cross stitch store as big as that. And there was the samples were everywhere. And I thought, you don't get it, dude, an hour. I, because he was worried about traffic getting back to his brother's house. So I was grabbing stuff and I thought, oh, I have to get Sarah something. So that's why I bought her that little, I thought, I, I like Bent. It was Bent Creek, right? It's Bent Creek. Yeah. They're really cute. But that, if you haven't ever been to that store and you ever get a chance to go, you should go. Cause it's, it's a pretty amazing cross stitch store. That would be, yeah. Someday yeah. maybe I'll let you go. That'd be fun. This next one is a project that we started. I uh, failed. A year and a half ago. We <laughs> were going to stitch one of these blocks. It's a free pattern from Snowflower Diaries. And they're so cute. And um, we were going to stitch each a block a month. And I did. And you didn't. But that's okay. I but I still it. did. I think it helped that I decided to do it all in one big piece. So every month when I started a new one, I didn't have to fiddle around with finding fabric and cutting it and like whatever. Yeah. So I just stitched mine. It's huge. It's a really big piece, but it's all little monthly. Um, oh, and they're super cute. I really love them. I don't know if you can see. Is the whole thing showing? I can't see. Yes. Yes. So this is the whole thing, except she also published a free pattern for a border to go around it all like all the way around and I don't have a picture like it's I don't have a picture of the border just the chart um, it was called the joyful world called joyful world and she did a stitch along so I always think of it as the joyful world Sal but I think it's just the joyful world and you can get all these patterns free on her blog they are just or really even cool. if you join the Facebook group they're all loaded on in the files oh, yeah, on that's it. true you can join that no flower diaries Oh, so cute. Oh, I know. I love how it turned out. She has DMC conversions, but I, and I stitched probably about half of it is DMC and half of it is classic color works. Oh, I have to go back and finish mine. I love June with the bear and the bee. bee skip. How big of a piece of fabric do you think you bought for that? What do you think? I don't know. I just, That's big. I bet I bought a big one. Yeah. I, I actually have room. I could cut, I just realized I could cut some of that off the bottom probably and make a little small do some little I uh, probably do a little couple. you were doing it on 32 count over two? 32 count over two yeah and I really like how it turned out it'll just be a big piece my house is pretty big and I have some spaces that could use some pretty things on the wall um so I'm I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to put it I'm just going to frame it somehow and you should get it framed I might just get it framed if I can on that I mean that's a pretty big piece that's kind of a little bit of an heirloom piece that you know yeah, I really love that one. I'm so happy I did it. And, and, and for anybody that wonders, I flaked out. I got January and February done, part of March. And then, you, uh -huh. and then you didn't do anymore. You should I, go back to it. They're really easy. They're fun. I should. I should. I've got fabric. And I think my problem was, I don't know what my problem was. There was no problem. I just have ADD or something when it comes to and I, I, I have to say I did, um, last year I did lose a little bit of my stitching mojo in the, um, well, I was basically losing it in the, when we were doing that too. I mean, I was stitching other things, I think a year ago, um, I think so. mania, I think I just got overwhelmed with what all I had going and I, yeah, I think if I'd had it all in one piece, but I don't think I'll go back and try to do it all in one piece. I don't think no, I, I could probably just, I would have to do it on such, I would do it on 18 count and 
I would be too big. I think a I would lot rather of colors overlap. They're, each month has some new colors, but some overlap. So it wouldn't be too hard probably to kit it up each one in advance. I mean, I should just do it. I should just get some fabric and do it. This is what I worked on yesterday around the, we went and found a quiet place in the wilderness where there was nobody. And we built a little campfire and I sat around the fire and stitched on this all day yesterday. Not all day. If I had stitched all day, I probably would have made bigger, better progress, but I had already had quite a bit of this done, but I love it. I did the little ladybugs. Aren't they so cute? Oh, I'm going to have to do that pattern when you're done. Yeah, I really like it. It's nicely written. doesn't take a lot of colors, but there's so much color changing that it just, it's just so really vibrant and bright. Cheerful. It's cheerful. Yeah. So I have to tell you, I bought that for her for Christmas because I think she, she doesn't like winter all that much. And, and so I thought she needs something to start. She didn't start it in the winter like I thought she would, but I, I did thought, I started it for mania. I had it tucked away and I just pulled it out when it was mania time. I have one last thing that I worked on this week and it's fully finished almost. And I'm, I'm giving it away as a gift to somebody I love. Oh, you pillowed it. I pillowed it. Yeah. This is Alicia Paulson. Um, Posey Gets Cozy is the name of her blog and little shop online. And her designs are some of our favorites to stitch as well. You'll see some of those pop up probably next week in our Mania video. Um, and this was a free sampler she did at the beginning of the um, coronavirus uh, quarantine. Um, it's called the homeschool sampler. And I don't know if she did it on purpose because everybody suddenly was homeschooling. I already homeschooled, so I didn't have a huge change in that direction. But some of my friends did. So I stitched this with a friend in mind who now is homeschooling for the rest of the school year that she didn't plan to. So I thought it turned out cute. I just used a white on white. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see. There's just a little pattern in the white. Yeah. It's just what I had on hand. I didn't have anything great. So, but That's I think it so turned out cute. cute. I just need to finish hand stitching it shut. I just did that this morning right before. So. That's cute. I pillowed it up. So those were all my mania whips. I did. I'm enjoying having something different to work on every day. Actually, it keeps me. Yeah, it has been nice. Yeah, I, I last year I think also with my mania, I think my plans died because, again, we went to Minnesota kind of at the end of of it, and then we went right from getting home from Minnesota to going to Sarah's house and taking care of my little three sweetie pies for several days while they went on a, a kind of a family reunion kind of trip, and so I didn't stitch. And I kind of, at that point, it was the end of the month and, uh, and I didn't really pick it back up again. And everything was actually pretty much still kitted, still in this basket that I had them in Yeah. all year, kind of tucked in the corner of a room. So when I did Mania this year, I was able to go through the ones that were still in there, pick out the ones I wanted and and it was easier to do. So it was yeah. easier. Yeah, I've had mine just in this basket. I have a little shelf in my and I just have plastic bags. Actually, I bought sheet protectors and each project is just in a sheet protector kitted up with its floss that I needed for at least for now. And wow. it just slides and I just pull it out and I have my little planner sitting in it that says what I'm working on each day because there's no other, I don't need this for anything else anymore, my planner. No, no. So it became my mania. These are my project bags. Oh yeah, those are nice too. These are just, zip. huh? Nice that they zip. They are, and they're pretty sturdy. I, I had none of them are broken. I mean, I whip them around, and they, I had tags on all of them originally for last year's Mania, and a lot of people I see on Floss Tube using these, they're just from Amazon. You could get a package of like, I don't even know, 12 of them or something like that for pretty affordable. I, I, look, I see some of those beautiful project bags, though, and I think, oh, someday I'll splurge them. I know. It would be fun to have some, but I just am not going to, I just haven't. We have to have money for our stitching. I know. Yeah, so plastic bags and sheet protectors, protectors it is right now. Yep. Um, let's see. Next, on, we, did, we both did our whips, right? Next yep. on our list was haul. And I don't have a lot, but I have a little, and you do too. Yeah. You want me to go first or you? I don't care. Uh, I, I can go. Well, so, Come here. so let's see. When I, I, I follow a lot of floss tubers on Instagram, and I... Uh, keep seeing and so does Sarah the um hawk run hollow patterns mm -hmm. and I I like I said I don't normally do big full coverage pieces but there's something about those patterns that just are so sweet and um 
I was watching um, C. Zook stitch Carolyn and her floss tube, uh, her mania this month was letting her start a hawk run hollow. And she's doing it with as a stitch along with somebody else. I can't remember who. I think there's a D, D. Ellis maybe in, I think she might be in Hawaii. And uh, they're start, they probably started it this week. I haven't seen Carolyn's newest video yet. We can and them in the Sarah, comments in the show. Uh, if you, you can, we can link to them in the show notes below yeah. if anyone wants to. Yeah. Play. She has a, she has a fun, yeah. Anyway, so she was talking about it and Sarah, at that same time, Sarah was like, oh, I, I really love those Hawk Run hollow patterns. And mm -hmm. I'd sort of look at them and I'm like, wow, those are, those are a serious commitment. The patterns alone are not exactly $8. And plus they're big, no matter what you do them on, they're going to be big. And as we started looking at them, we realized there was so, there was more than I thought there were in the series. Mm -hmm. So last Saturday or Sunday, <laughs> I was sitting in my chair stitching and I was scrolling through um I was probably watching a floss tip I don't even know what I was doing I think I must have looked up um Hawk Run Hollow on 123 Stitch and they were on sale <laughs> and so I messaged Sarah and I said hey guess because we talked about maybe starting it in August when this mania was over and if we do Jolly July that would be over and let's let's do that oh first we we're gonna do it in January and then we decided maybe we should start it in August and then I saw them on sale and I so I messaged her and we were messaging back and forth and I said well I bought one and a few minutes later I get a text from her I think I bought one so the one and we were agonizing over which ones to get I had narrowed it down to two and I really love um, did I, uh, the village at Hawk Run Hollow, I think the village one. But I settled on da, 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 a year at Hawk Run Hollow. I really and love that one too. I, I think, you know, when we were gonna do the Joyful World, you know, together, I was so enthused about it because I, I like little yearly things. Yeah. I just don't always finish them. You're gonna do that all in one. You're not gonna do that in individual like you were. Oh, no, this is all in one. And I also was able to find fabric that somebody said they were stitching a, I think Carolyn said she was stitching a By the Bay Harbor Haven on. Hmm. It's a, and I have this crazy idea. Here I've been complaining about my eyes and how bad they are. I bought a 28 count vintage smoky white cashel, cashel linen. And it's got a little bit of variation in it, kind of a smoky. I, my lighting isn't real great here, but maybe you can see yeah, this. Yeah, kind of. I'm going to do it on 28 over 1. <laughs> I sound like a really good idea when I'm sitting in my chair ordering this, and then the fabric came, and I'm like, yeah. But I can't. I can do it. I can do it with my with my light on. and Because I didn't want a piece that was going to be so – it's still going to be pretty good size. But um, It would look it, pretty, actually, on the wall right behind where you are, on that blue wall. Yeah, I know. Dad loves those paintings, but I think I might have to get moved. Or they could go next to it or something. Yeah. But I, that, so that's, so now I'm like, oh, I don't know. Now that I have it and it doesn't take that many different, mine doesn't have very many flosses. It's like 21 colors or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe I just want to start it now. Maybe I don't want to wait. Well, okay. You can if you want to. Oh, no, I'll, I'll wait till you're ready. I'll just stitch along and I'll just stitch along when I'm. Well, we'll be stitching along with Carolyn and Dee. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be late because I think they started theirs this week, but we can do it along with them. But anyway, that was my my um, one haul. And then the other haul I got is one that um, I've been seeing. Every, I, Kindred Stitcher, I think, was talking about this. Oh, Jan Hicks talked about it. Somebody else talked about it. Uh, Misty Purcell on Luminous Fiber Arts was had them in her shop, too. Um, and it's the Blackbird Designs. It's the Loose Feathers. Um, birds oh yeah yeah so it's three charts for some reason she only did three seasons and you stitch them all on one fat one fabric and um i was gonna buy them online and i was i thought oh i i, I kind of like birds i didn't realize i like birds as much as i do but i started working from home now and probably will until i retire and uh, there's a tree outside my den window and the, there's little chickadees or wrens that are in that tree all day long that kind of pop around and look in the window. And I hung a hummingbird feeder right next to it. And I have a hummingbird that comes several times a day. So it's kind of been fun to watch the birds come. And so I, I had to place an order to my local store, which is about 20 minutes away from me. It's Thread Needle Street in Issaquah. And uh, she's a one woman show. 
and she's been there forever. She was probably, she was in business when my Stitch and Stuff store was open. I mean, she knew Edna and she's a business and I had ordered um, during quarantine, I had ordered some threads from her. She pops them in the mail real quick again the next day, but I really last week wanted to go out. I just needed to get out of the house. And so I went for a drive. It was sunny. I stopped, I quit work a half hour early or half a day early. And I called her and said, can I do a curbside pickup of these flosses? And she said, sure. You know, so I said, by the way, would you happen to have the Blackbird design charts? And she did. She had all three of them. So I said, throw those in too. So I pulled up to her store. So that's autumn. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Winter. Okay. And again, not a whole lot of colors. They're they're pretty yeah. basic. And you think and you'll them with the called for colors? Yeah, and they're they're fancy floss, but I think I'm gonna because there's not that many. Yeah. I'm gonna do them summer. So she, I pulled up to her store and rolled my back window down, and she came running out with her mask on and tossed the package in my car and ran back in her store. And I realized that I had bought a piece of linen a year ago, probably because I was gonna do a stitch along with Jan Hicks. She was doing um, a reproduction sampler, friendship sampler, and I never did it. I didn't. I never started it. So I bought this linen, and it is a. 25 count Lugana pewter and it is a uh, perfect size to mm. do kind of a blue. It's it's kind of a gray blue actually. It looks more blue to me right now, but I think it's really mm. more gray. And I'm gonna be able to do all three of those on this piece. And I'm really, really excited about that. So I'm are trying to doing, or individual. You do them all three next to each other because a long piece. Oh find a picture of a done that way. I don't know if any of the pictures. See. I don't think any of them probably some people are do can do them separate, but the problem is this was a oh I didn't see this. This is a bonus pattern in there. Look at that. Ooh, that's pretty. I haven't really looked at them that closely, but that's gorgeous. That's um cool. the problem is if you if you're gonna do them separately, you would only do you only get part of the alphabet. Oh Oh, right. They're designed to go in one long. Yeah. So they're designed to go, but I don't think any of them have a picture of them all three stitched together. So, but it has placement for it. They all have special little designs. This one, the fall one has the crow or the blackbird. Oh, cute. Oh, cute. The winter one has... She's got several little projects. It's got like a little... Sampler. Okay, I'm gonna stand up for a second. I have to go let the dog out of the room. The girl oh. is in here. Yeah, well, we she gotta figure out the. the lawnmower. She's scared of the lawnmower. There we go. Oh. She's been wanting out for a while and I just kept ignoring her. There we oh. go. So anyway, that's, that's my, those are my two exciting hauls that I'm really excited about. Okay, my haul is similar because we've got the shores at Hawk Run Hollow, the shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And I've been, I didn't even look at this one before. And like, I've always thought I maybe would do the farms of Hawk Run Hollow first, if I ever did one. And then I just looked at this and it was between this one and the Halloween one. But now that I've also looked at the spring one, I really love the passage. Um, in the spring one, there's a passage from the Song of Solomon that I love. It's one of my favorite um, Bible passages and pieces of poetry, honestly. So maybe if I'd realized that that whole thing was through. I might have gone with spring, but I am really happy that I actually went with this because I think it'll be really fun to start this in the summer. Summer, I just like to, I don't know, the idea of stitching something kind of ocean and nautical. Since I grew up in the Seattle area, the water has special meaning for me and I love it. I just think it's so pretty. I love the moon. I can't wait to stitch the moon, even though it looks like it might be kind of a pain to stitch, honestly. I know, but it's going to be so cute. It's going to be super cute when it's done. So I had that. And then the other I don't know if you can call it haul, but I want to give away on Priscilla and Chelsea's floss tube. That's haul. It came this week. It's haul, right? Yeah. So this is one of the Priscilla and Chelsea, or well, it's Priscilla and is it hands-on designs or just them? No, I guess it's just Priscilla's. This is not a hands-on design. Sorry. I should know what I'm talking about. I guess I could take it out of the thing so it's not. Thank you. Are you going to use all the colors? I haven't even looked at it yet that closely to decide because I've been so just wrapped up in my mania. I love the one that she did. They did last week that has the green truck. That green truck for the August. 
think so, yeah. You can, is August trunking along? Yeah. I really like the blue of the truck. The yeah. old, I think it's old blue jeans. No, it's rain shower, which I don't have that color on hand, but I could probably order it. And yeah. yeah, just I think that might be a cute one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stitch that just yet because I have so many other things going on. I don't know, I could start another one, but kind of feel like I might want to finish up a couple before I, so that's yeah. all the haul I have. I didn't get a lot of stuff. I well, probably most of the time won't have a lot of stuff. I don't. I'll make up for that. Yeah, I will. Maybe I will more now. I don't know. I try not to buy a lot. I try to be sort of frugal, but every uh, I'll probably buy something at least once a month. So I, um, I have done quite a bit of um, retail therapy the last couple months. You do quite a bit of retail therapy all the time. <laughs> I know, but it was, it, I, dad keeps saying, because I have a little allowance every month for my stitching. He's like, you're, you're spending a lot more on that than, than I, that you're supposed to. I'm like, I know, but it's just making me feel better. You're not going out to the movies. You're not doing anything else fun. Like, that's nothing. Kind of, like nothing. In fact, I want you all to know that my daughter was so concerned about me that she called. Okay. I didn't tell you, but I have four kids. So I have my daughter, Sarah, and I have a married son and lives about 10 blocks away and a married son that's living here and a, not married son that's living here and so I've got three boys all local and she called them and was all worried about me going to the grocery store back in March and so I have not been in a grocery store since but middle of honestly you're not missing out on anything it's not fun to go shopping I, now. There, it, 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 it was, there was an adjustment because my boys two of my boys go do my shopping every Thursday and and at the time that it all happened I was also shopping for my mom and my dad they're in their 80s and they live about an hour away up north of yeah. me and so my boys do their shopping when they need stuff and then I I take it up to them on Fridays and I don't work Fridays and um, kind of have a little socially distanced chat with them and they're getting pretty lonely so I didn't I didn't leave my house I mean really other than to maybe go through a drive-through like McDonald's once in a blue moon Carrie and I would go out my husband so I did, I was, I was kind of stalking Misty Purcell's Etsy shop. She, for some reason, I used to try to get her fabric and could never, I never would catch her updates. And for some reason, she had a whole lot of fabric in her shop when, um, in March and I would order a couple pieces and then I'd go back a week later and there'd still be some. So I'd ordered a couple more. And mm -hmm. so I just, I bought, I bought more fabric probably than I have patterns. But I do have some, and I'll just dole them out as haul as we go on, because I probably do have to rein it in a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, so that's that's all I got. Well, I think that was kind of our list for today. We might have different kinds of things as we go and yeah. get a little more experience and know what we're doing. But we hope you enjoyed our yeah. chat today. Um, hit like, hit subscribe, leave us a comment, just say, hey, we watched you and you're not terrible. <laughs> Please, uh, terrible. And if you, yeah, we would love to have people join us. Oh, with the last thing, maybe we could close with this. Um, one floss tuber that we enjoyed watching this week and then we'll sign off because we're getting, yeah. I didn't think we would have a problem finding things to talk about and we didn't, we're fine. <laughs> Hold on, I, I dropped my phone. I'll start. So I tried a new, I watched a new, to me, floss tube this week called Stitching at the Cabin, and it's another mother-daughter um, floss tube. And I think they're in California, and that was enjoyable. They stitch really differently than I do. Um, they're stitching, I feel like, hey, like. Huge pieces. The, the daughter didn't show a lot of stitching this week. <clears throat> she had a cute little hedgehog. Mill Hill Hedgehog, I think, is what she was stitching. That was really cute. And the mom stitched, I don't remember her name. I'm not doing well with remembering the names, but she was stitching. She stitched. Huge, beautiful, yeah, beautiful pieces. So that was fun to watch. I enjoy watching people who stitch different kinds of things than me because it gives me new ideas or, yeah, just interesting. Yeah. So that was the one that I enjoyed this week. I'll link it in the, I'll try and figure out. I'm new to this. I've, I've never done video editing. I've never done any of this. I'll try to figure out how this works and link stuff down in the com in the like show notes below. Hopefully yeah. I'll figure that out. And I started watching and so stitching at the cabin, they've been on for a while. Yeah. I, just, found a, I found one. Uh, her name is Candace K and she I think has five videos up. She started 
four weeks ago, and I've only watched one full video of hers, um, but she uh, is home. I think she's trying to work from home right now, and I think- her bird. sorry, what? it's really loud right now. Oh, you can hear the bird, sorry. Yeah, I think, what is that sound? It's oh, okay. Birds. Uh, anyway, so she is, I think, one of those moms that found herself working from home and now homeschooling, I think, two little boys. And she was really enjoyable. And I, I'm trying to think what she stitched, though, that she, I think I found her because she was doing the 24 hours of cross stitch. Mm -hmm. And so she stitches a lot of similar things um, to what I think you and I would stitch mm -hmm. more of them, the smaller, like. Brenda Gervais and mm -hmm. Blackbird. It's, it's interesting when you watch a variety of lost tubers, the variety of um, likes and trends in stitching. And, you know, there's several that I watch, um, even though I don't stitch what they would stitch. There's a lot of a uh, couple that I watch that do a lot of uh, the big reproduction samplers, which are gorgeous, but I just don't, at this point, haven't really felt like I wanted to tackle one of those. But, um, so that's, but she, I don't think did that. Candace was more of the smaller projects and stuff. And she was, seemed real sweet. So I think I will definitely watch a few more of hers today because when we're done, I'm going to put my feet up because I don't have anything else to do. Because the first thing I did this morning was text her when she wasn't even up yet. Are we doing floss tube today? Are we doing this? Are we really going to do it? I woke up and I thought she didn't say anything. So we're probably not going to do it. So I'm fine. <laughs> No, it was on my agenda. I actually have a lot to do today. I don't get to put my feet up. I'm going to go create a couple of garden beds. Yeah, my garden, I have a trailer parked in my garden right now. So we aren't probably going to garden for a long time. So that's us. Well, we're glad you joined us today and we hope you come back. I think we're kind of thinking we'll try to do this weekly and we'll see how that goes. So yep, like, give us a like, subscribe. You can find um, me on Instagram at Sarah Dempson. If you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find mom at. What am I at? What are you? I'm at. Um... <laughs> what is your Instagram? Oh, my Instagram name. I'm sorry. Is Kim Renee Gatz. Oh yeah. Kim Renee Gatz. And it's just uh, Renee is R-E-N-E-E-G-A-T-Z. We probably um, could find set up. Follow us if you want. Hmm? Yeah. Or maybe we should set up an Instagram for our channel. We could do that. I will have to maybe think how to do that. Yeah, that might be easier for people to find us. Yeah. I don't know if I have the energy to post content at, well, at two, oh. but maybe you do. Oh, if you do all this, I can, I can manage an Instagram account for us. How's that? So here, we're evolving as we go, right on. But you probably could link to our Instagram when you do the links, right? I probably can. Yeah. We'll see what I can figure out. Hopefully, okay. we can get it. Thank okay. you for joining us. And we look forward to sharing more with you next week. Have a great Bye. week. Be well.